hair and styles were very important to the Native American Indian. The styles were as diverse as the people who inhabited the various areas of, of the Americas. It was commonly believed that it, as long as they had their hair, they had their strength. <laughs> Sounds like Solomon from the Bible. And it would be difficult for anybody to hurt them. While the Native American culture was diverse and varied from area to area, there was one thing which seemed to be universal amongst them, and that was the caring for their hair. By and large, their hair was straight and black, and in some instances, the sun faded their hair to a rich dark brown. Most men and women let their hair grow long, and some braided it, and some let it hang loose, and still others had unique ways of styling it. As you might imagine, they could not pop into a Walmart for a bottle of shampoo. Now, they found a substitute in nature. Pure clay was used. It was massaged into the hair and then washed out. <clears throat> it left the hair and scalp very clean. Some used bear fat and oil from other animals to make their hair very shiny. As a rule, Native American men were handsome and built quite sturdily. The women were also quite attractive in their youth. Sometimes the young men would hide sweet grass in their hair to make them smell more attractive. And if you've never smelled sweet grass, it is a wonderful, wonderful smell. It was almost a cinnamony smell. Now it was common for, the, for men to wear feathers in their hair. Sometimes they also used skins, fur, and shell beads. Later, when trade items were brought in, they wore glass beads. Early Europeans found that an easy way to tell what what tribe a person was from was by their hair and their head, headdress. Long hair was not without uh, uh, causing problems though. For example, in the eastern woodland, uh, when, hunt, <clears throat> when hunting in the brush, hair could be tangled and caught by plants and tree branches. These Indian men would wear their hair in what we call a mohawk today. They often shaved the hair on the sides of their heads with a flint knife. <laughs> but believe me, those knives were sharp. I've experienced the, the, the uh, flint knives and the little uh, flakes of flint from, from tool production and when I was digging. And I tell you what, I came up a, a, more than a few times with my hands lacerated and bleeding. They were sharp. Anyways, only a tuft of hair was left from the forehead to, to the back of the neck. If the mohawk grew long, it was neatly braided. Then ornaments, such a, uh, which are called roaches, were fit over the scalp lock. Eagle, turkey, and other feathers in the roaches told personal tales of bravery and deeds that, that, that the brave had done. The older men let their hair grow very, very long as a sign of peace. All of us, I'm sure, have seen the elaborate <coughs> headdresses that were worn by the chiefs of the tribes, so common in Western movies. They did actually wear such headdresses, though, but it wasn't only the chief. Some were made of animal skins, turbans, uh, buckskin, as well as feathered headbands. Women of the woodlands wore their hair long, twisted in the back, and sometimes wrapped with tight, uh, with uh, bright buckskin. The Hopi women uh, had a unique way of wearing their hair. As young girls, their hair was cut very short. As she grew older, her hair was allowed to grow longer, with bangs in the front, and when she was old enough to get married, uh, she would have large circles of hair on each side of her head. The, the, the circles were, of hair were meant to look like a squash or a squash flower. After they were married, uh, they always were uh, wore simple head braids. If you want to see an example of this in modern culture, Star Wars, Princess, Princess Leia, she wore her hair like that, taking inspiration for the, from what the Native Americans had done so long ago. Hunters um, of the plains uh, did not cut their hair, but wore it long, parted in the middle, and each side was then braided. The thick braids hung over the man's chest. Native Americans, men and women, both spent hours and hours sewing fancy beads pat bead patterns on a headband, which was, of course, worn around the head, thus called the headband. Sometimes a beaded rosette was worn right in the middle of the band. Now, many tribes changed what they wore on, uh, on their heads during, during the winter months. Fairly common were fur caps made of of uh, skin from coyotes um, and badgers and other animals, as well as the beaver. Uh, some tribes decorated their caps with dyed porcupine quills. The, the Indian people uh, 
did incredible work with porcupine quills and coloring them, dyeing them with natural with natural natural dyes, and then producing wonderful, wonderful different items using these beautifully colored porcupine quills. Well, that's all I have for you this time, my friends. And I, I, if you any of you uh, try to use clay to wash your hair, well, let me know how it turns out. Um, I don't think I'm going to try it. While there are patches of clay where I live, uh, I think I will pass on it. I don't think it's pure clay. It has impurities in it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video and talking a little about, bit about the Native American people who were a wonderful, wonderful culture. Okay, love you all much on the other side of that monitor. God bless you, and God willing, I'll be back and see you again real soon. Stay well, stay safe, and stay happy.